Welcome to the second part of this video on the bishop and knight checkmate. We took a look at the critical key position earlier on and that is one position that hopefully will stick in your mind and that's the position obviously you want to aim for when, when attacking and then you can use the W technique. So I think that's important to get that technique set in stone for you. Now what we're going to look at now is maybe a worst case scenario when white's pieces are all stuck on the back rank and you know this is going to take a long time to get to our perfect scenario here and this is actually quite hard it's not so easy to do this but you've got to try to first of all force your opponent's king stick it to the back rank so stick it to one of the back ranks it could be the side as well because that's obviously a back rank at the same time so you've got to force your opponent's king to the back rank first of all so it can't escape if he defends well he'll go towards this corner and then you can use what we looked at in the first video now to force it to the back rank you have to use a combination of all three pieces so you have to use your king knight and bishop in communication well with each other now your king and knight should generally stay quite close to each other but your bishop can be used often to cut across diagonals and cut your opponent's king off and also your bishop is a very good piece to aim to create a zhuzhuang position so to waste a move so a lot of time you use your bishop to waste a move now if you ever get this in a situation it's not easy but I'm going to show you now one way that I would do it. This might not be the quickest way but let's just see how I get on here trying to play with some good defence from black. And of course remember we've got to do this in under 50 moves. So the first thing I want to do is try to bring my king as close to my opponent's king as possible. So let's start marching up the board. And now my opponent obviously tries to bring his king into the centre of the board as well. So we start coming forwards and now my king gets as near as possible. Now the second stage here after my king has got as close as I can is to start involving the coordination of my other two pieces because in order to force my opponent's king backwards I need to use these two guys as well. So let's bring them in the game. So knight to f3 and now let's say my opponent stays in the center and now I involve my other piece. So my bishop and knight are trying to force my opponent's king backwards. My opponent may stay in the center as long as possible. This is the best defense. Defensively, obviously, the king should stay in the center for as long as possible. And when it is forced backwards, it should head towards the color opposite to the bishop. So in this case, it should head towards this square here. So now let's say I gain the opposition first. And my opponent now shouldn't really head towards the light square because that makes my job easier. But he should now, as he's forced backwards, go towards the dark square because that will then at least test my W technique later on. His king's moved backwards, so now I can move my king forwards. And well, he doesn't need to go towards h8 straight away, he can still stay off the back rank by going to d7. So let's see this now. He wants to come to c6 and maybe to c5. So let's use my knight, bring that a bit closer and stop him coming towards c6. And you can see my knight and king are staying very close together here. After this, he should go back towards the dark square. And this is kind of a typical position now. And I say this is a pattern well worth remembering. When you have your king's opposite, if you can place your bishop in front of your king, it takes away these two squares for your opponent's king. So he has to move backwards. And as soon as he moves backwards, let's say here, you can come forwards. And now we've created our first stage. We stuck him to the back rank. But this is actually still quite difficult because we haven't got our key position yet. So let's say he goes king to e8. Now this is a question for you here. And in this position, I would ask you how or what do you think is a good way to play this? Maybe my way is not the best, but it's, it's one way I figured out is a good way to play here. And if you pause the video now, see how you would continue in this position. There's more than one way, but I'll show you one way here. Well, I think a very nice idea in this type of structure is I've, I've said you want to keep your knight close to your king, but in actual fact, your bishop 
wants to stay a little bit of way away from the white king because in some cases this bishop is very good checking on maybe the diagonal i've highlighted here as well as on this diagonal so you want to keep it open and you can waste time with this bishop and a very clever move here and i think this is a key move is a move like bishop to c4 here now when you're doing any endings or any chess, you always have to think of your opponent's possibility. And this move, wasting a move, so going for, it's basically a zhugzhuan, going for a move where you gain, you're forcing black to make a concession, seems like a good move to me. Because after bishop to c4, if our opponent goes king to d8, we can now play bishop to b5. And we've stopped our opponent moving towards h8. Now, you may be wondering, why, why didn't this work, let's say, if I play a move like knight to f5? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't this work this way? Well, in this case, your bishop is too near to your king. So if you try something like bishop to d7 here, disaster struck, this is stalemate because he hasn't got enough room to escape. So you need to keep your bishop a little bit away from the opposing king. So bishop to c4 is a good move. And of course, now he should head towards the dark squares but again this is where you need to use all three pieces and he wants to come to g7 and really you've got to keep your opponent boxed in as much as you can so how do we stop him coming to g7 whilst keeping our bishop open knight to f5 natural move trying to keep the opponent's king blocked in he only has one square to go to king to e8 and now again it's still quite tough here what should i do in this position do I have an immediate way to make progress? If not, then you waste the move. This is a key idea. If you can't see an immediate way to make progress, think about whether wasting a move will help you or hinder you. I think in this case it will hinder me because if I waste a move, it gives my opponent a chance to come opposite to my king with me to move, which is good. On the other hand, if I go, for example, opposite to his king with my opponent to move, we do this little dance now. For example, he goes to d8, threatening to come to c7. I do not have the w technique here because my knight is not placed in that position yet. And if I try to keep the opposition, we just dance about like this. So this does not help. So always think, does wasting a move help me or not? And in this position here, well, I think wasting a move does. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to drop my bishop back one square. And again, the key point here, if he goes opposite my king, I can now stop him coming towards the dark square, forcing him to the corner I want to checkmate him on. So, of course, my opponent should now go king to f8. And here, my knight and bishop are okay placed. So I can move my king slowly over. Again, if my opponent's king goes opposite me, well, I simply check and again, I've cut him off from his defensive side of the board. So he should now definitely head towards the other square, the dark square. So he should now go king to g8. And again, I've got to use my three pieces. So king to f6 check makes a lot of sense here. Um, now, let's say he tries to stay in the center a little bit longer. There are probably a couple of ways to do this. Again, always be careful of stale matrix, something like knight g7, stale mate, you can't do this. But now I just want to get the key set up. Can you remember the key setup that we looked at in the first video? If you can't, then try to picture it. Try to remember, pause the video now. So the key setup we looked at was a position where we had our knight on f7, and our bishop on h7. So this is the key setup. And then we can go back to what we learned in the first video, the W technique. So try to now picture how you may be able to force that to occur. Now that we've made a lot of progress with the position, there's probably more than one way to do this, but I'll show you one way in a second. Okay, well, one way I saw here is by just trying to first of all the idea of this move is to first of all get my knight to f7 so this is my stage one plan so after bishop here i force his king to g8 and now my knight via a check comes to f7 and when the knight comes to f7 his king cannot escape out anywhere it can't escape this way and i get for stage one achieved for example after king f8 knight to f7 this is the 
first key thing. And the next thing I need to do is get my bishop to h7. And then we go back to what we learned in the first video. So, for example, after king g8, bishop here, he only has one move. My knight is in its ideal square now. And after king to f8, we're now joined the first video and we get to the key w position, bishop to h7. And here, as you can see, if you know the w technique now, we've got our knight here, our bishop here and the opposition. It is this w technique. We just go knight to e5. And then we use our knight in the w it looks like our opponent's king may escape but this is the key position as long as we stop him coming forwards we've got to create the box around him bishop to d3 and then his the king will slowly be forced backwards by taking control of these squares and we saw this in the first video so we don't need to go over that again so some little tips there how to force your opponent first onto the back rank then into the wrong corner and then into the right corner so it's a very hard way to do this and you've got to remember lose the move at the correct time try to get that key position and then things should become a lot easier now to really master this technique what you should do is set up this position I've got here, very hard position to win, even against computers. But set this up against a computer and try it out something like 10 times more until you've mastered the technique. Also set up the key position we saw on the first video against the computer and master that. And then things like riding a bike will become second nature. And you'll be able to win this with maybe only 30 seconds on your clock. It'll be easy. And that is one grandmaster endgame technique that will surely help you a lot in the future and in your games if you ever get this you'll be confident and using this technique of the coordination between your knight and bishop can help for all areas of the game the middle game and even the opening you'll see some of these techniques being used in, in occasional games so anyway that's my two-part video on the bishop and knight checkmate hope you enjoyed it and if it's popular i'll do more videos please like the video if you liked it of course and please subscribe if um, you're not a subscriber already and check out my website gingergm.com for some of my products and some more lessons and videos. Cheers for now.